saying with Sharad and I on Consider This. COVID-19 has resulted in new stress triggers that may affect mental health. Everything from curtailed social interactions, the loss of normalcy, fear of death, as well as economic uncertainty. How do we deal with these anxieties as we learn to live in this new normal? Joining us on the line now, we have Vizla Kumaresan, clinical psychologist. Welcome to the show, uh, Vizla. Thanks for joining us tonight. Now, what is it about the MCO that is putting increased emotional or psychological pressure on individuals, especially those who have already identified mental health issues? Hi, Melissa. Thanks for having me on. Um, Okay, so to answer the question, the MCO is stressful on multiple levels. Uh, first is, you know, being stuck at home. Um, at this point, it seems like it's fairly indefinite. Um, people are not sure uh, about things like work. Um, many people in Malaysia are, you know, facing issues regarding food and income. Um, and a whole bunch of other livelihood issues are affecting people. Um, and then, of course, for those of us who uh, who have work, we have lost a sense of routine. Many of us rely on these external cues of when to start work, uh, when to finish work, when do we eat, and those things uh, have lost uh, are lost as well. And some of us are struggling to develop a routine by ourselves. Some of us are able to deal with it okay. Uh, but it does put a strain on the body and the mind. This, and uh, it's so even this... harder, it's even harder for people who already have diagnosis of mental health problems. Yes, uh, Vizla, could you help us understand for those people who already are diagnosed, who come to you, for instance, uh, for help, uh, how much more, I mean, uh, are we pushing people, is this situation pushing people to the edge? I don't know yet if it's the edge, but, you know, people are definitely finding it very difficult to deal with it, to cope. Um, I think based on what we, have, we can see coming out of Wuhan, um, people in Wuhan, have, they've been in lockdown for weeks, and many of them who were previously undiagnosed have now developed things like agoraphobia. You know, they are afraid to come out of their homes. Um, people who have developed anxiety and panic disorder, people who have developed obsessive compulsive disorder because every, you know, we, we are being fed this information that everything needs to be clean. Uh, we don't know where other people have been. We don't know what they have touched, what they haven't. So um, th these are kinds of issues that are coming out of Wuhan. And also, of course, the social isolation is leading to things like depression. Right. Uh, and suicidality. Yeah. Vizla, so based on that, you know, based on uh, on what you what has been observed in Wuhan, um, if we can kind of extrapolate that here, are there early warning signs uh, for us to prevent those anxieties from developing into a more serious mental health problem? I think the best thing for people to do right now is to be mindful and watch themselves. Um, early signs would be, I mean, it's, it's difficult to say for certain because a lot of people would describe this as very traumatic. So people have lost, uh, are struggling with things like sleep. They never had issues before, but now sleep is an issue. Um, that would be an important sign, you know. Um, any effort to try and regulate sleep is not working. That might be a sign that you would need to talk to someone, for example, or um, call a counseling line. Um, I understand that befrienders have expanded their services during this time to call them and figure out what can be done to help yourself. Uh, the other thing that, you know, uh, would be um, a sign that um, you might need to talk, start talking to someone. I'm not saying that you're going to develop a mental health problem, but you might need to talk to someone. You might need to reach out to someone. Is if you can't stop yourself from worrying. You know, you ruminate. You think of worst case scenarios. You find yourself imagining things that you recognize are not realistic or it's not like you to fall into these kinds of patterns. You can't snap out of it. Right. Your usual coping mechanisms aren't working anymore. Uh, these would be the signs that people can look out for. 
to actually start paying attention. Um, you know, if you can't talk to someone, um, a lot of people are struggling to do that even because um, there's no privacy to right. talk to someone. Yeah. Uh, many people live in unsafe homes where there's a lot of suspicion when they sneak in and they are uh, talking to someone on the phone. Mm. Um, go online, look for resources. The right. easiest thing people can do is actually start a thought journal and just start noting down the different things that you're thinking. Right. Identify you. the ones that you think are unrealistic. Okay. Identify the worries that you think are reasonable, the ones that right. can, you can work with. For example, how are you going to pay rent? Sure. How are you going to sort out your finances over the next few months? Those will be the reasonable kinds of worries. Very, thank you so much, Vizsla, for speaking with us tonight. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have on this episode of Consider This. But stay tuned. In just a couple of minutes, we have Notepad as our colleague Ibrahim Sani will continue the conversation on mental health, particularly financial stress as a trigger. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sharad Kutun, signing off for this evening. Thank you so much for watching and good night.